enchanté. Now, one of the things I've noticed in your work, Tim, is that you seem to be um, an avant-garde interpretist, if you will. I think you really understand the impact of European culture on designs from all over the world. Right. Yeah. Um, tell me a little bit about the style of carpets that you're envisioning in here so that um, I know a little bit about what you want to do. Right. Well, I, you know, I, I really, I love taking, uh, t looking to see how the Europeans uh, took from different cultures, especially in the, in the 18th, 17th, 18th century. They took from different cultures and reimagined them for their culture. That's what chinoiserie is. Uh, so what I sort of imagine is taking uh, the culture of traditional 17th, 18th, 19th century rugs and reinterpreting them for today. So some of those styles and design are there, but they're being reinterpreted in the beautiful hides that you really are the king of. Well, <laughs> I, well I, I try. <laughs> Let's go inside and learn Great, a little bit more thanks. about it. Good. So yes, well you haven't seen anything yet. Wait till you come in and look at this incredible entry hall. You know, I'm, I'm a little overwhelmed in this property, and it reminds me of that phrase, um, act like you've been there. <laughs> I'm really having a hard time. Spend a little more time, you'll feel right at home, I promise. <laughs> I, uh, it's such a unique experience, and I think, you know, one of the things that's exciting about this is I think you have kind of a unique perspective on what you'd like to do with our work together. Tell me a little bit about what you have in mind. Well, I think the, the, the idea that I have is taking from historical perspective first, uh, looking at the influence of European style uh, carpets okay. uh, and reinterpreting them for today and in a fresh new way. So uh, looking at, at European design influence, uh -huh. uh, you know, it's interesting is that there was actually a shift uh, in the, from the 16th to the 17th century from Italy to France. Up until then, France was really a secondary player to Italy. Uh, and with the shift of, into the 17th century, France became the real powerhouse, both from a design and political perspective. And so I'd be interested to take a, an Italian design, um, one that's maybe more um, uh, uh, Florentine in, in its influence, and, and take some textiles from the Florentine. They never really were known for great rug making, but they were supreme at textiles. So taking a, an Italian textile and translating that into a rug, I think would be really incredible. And, and there's something um, that we're in Alençon, there's something appropriate about an Italian influence in a French style product. Tell us a little bit about the history of this town. Well, what's interesting is that um, uh, this is actually Alençon was, was, became the lace center for the world. It started out in Venice, however, uh, so it's the, the Italian-French influence, uh, and Louis XIV was so determined to show that, that France was a real power on its own, he actually forbade the, uh, the, in, the importation of any foreign products. So he set up uh, Alençon as the center for lace making here in France. So it had been in Venice and it moved to Alençon, uh, and so Alençon is really, for hundreds of years, was the center of lace making. So we thought, I thought it'd be sort of fun to take that aspect of lace and figure out how you translate that into a rug as well. And obviously it can't be a literal translation because lace is, is very fine and delicate and wouldn't translate. But the concept of lace mm -hmm. is interesting because there's a, a under, under, um, uh, there's an underlying design element, which is very geometric and mm -hmm. grid-like with then the floral detail on top. And I think that's what I would like to try to figure out how to translate into a design. And it's structured. 
In its structure, yeah, exactly. And so it's interesting. So it seems like um, in talking to you about this, it feels like you have an interest and appreciation for both um, stylistically where some of these European style patterns or designs come from, but you also have a pretty good feel for the history behind it. Yes, and I think I think it's interesting is, is, is that it's so important to understand the history, uh, to understand the history of how design develops because it is all cyclical and it is all um, one is necessary for the next to happen. So the third stylistic rug that I think would be interesting to do is one that is really um, more of an art modern style, which is, a, it's again, it's the follow-up to Art Deco, which Art Deco was also developed here in Paris and France. And so it's taking that aspect and taking it a little further, which was sort of the art modern, which was uh, immediately after the Second World War and through the 40s. Okay. Uh, and, and I think that style, which is it's taking the deco and then clean, clean, cleaning it up, streamlining it a little bit and taking some sort of fun with that. So I think that's one, another one of the rugs that I'd, I'd love to work with you on. So one of the designs in the collection, Tim, I noticed that um, is historical in nature is an obasan. Tell me a little bit about um, those type of carpets and, and what you like about the idea of doing them in high. Well, an obison is uh, is a flat weave carpet, uh, so it, it just naturally makes sense to be translated into hide because hide again it's another it's a, it's a very flat carpet. Uh, what an obison carpet is really known for mm -hmm. is bold colors uh, and very very strong pattern and design. Um, and so again, it's just a natural for for uh, Kyle Bunting, uh, and I think it's the idea of these big bold patterns that are then translated um, into hide in a more contemporary way. Because the, when you look at an Obasan rug, they're, they're beautiful, um, but they feel today sometimes a little dated. Mm. Uh, and so I actually don't use Obasans that much because they feel a bit like a timepiece, a bit like a period piece. And I think that what our real objective would be to figure out how to take an Obasan from the stylus stylistic aspect of an obison from the 18th century and bring it into the 21st century. So make the pattern, take some of those motifs, but make them a little more bold, make them a little more graphic and make them feel like they are of today. So another carpet in this group, if you will, um, is a polonaise. Yes, One yes. of my favorites is the idea of doing the polonaise. Tell me a little bit about the history, because I think that's an interesting way to understand the design. Yes, yes. Well, polonaise, are, are, it's actually one of my very favorite, favorite styles of rug, um, and I use them a lot on projects. Uh, polonaise, there's some debate as to how the name polonaise actually came about, uh, but the one that makes the most sense to me was that uh, it was the, uh, the king of Poland in the 17th century, who wanted to have some rugs made in Persia. Persia was, you know, was uh, at that time the most important place for all rugs designed. But he wanted them to have a little bit more of a European influence, to, to feel more like it was a European mm -hmm. rug. So it was rug that was rugs that were made in uh, Persia, but then had that European influence. So they're very, they're, they're much more um, open and um, light and and um, how to say swervy and, and they don't feel like a traditional Persian rug. They feel very much like a European rug, but they have the construction of a Persian rug. Uh, and they have, they tend to be very, fairly light colors, but very jewel tone colors. So it's, it's a very contemporary style, even though it comes from the 17th century. Now, if someone had told me that I was going to be doing savonnerie in high, <laughs> It's not exactly the vision I had for when I first started the I'm, business. I'm sure not. <laughs> it, it, it wasn't what I expected to be yes. doing, but I'm, I'm, I'm perhaps, uh, from a technical challenge, most excited about approaching this style. Tell us a little bit about it. Well, the Savonnerie, what I love about a Savonnerie rug is that it's, it's a plush, thick carpet that was really designed uh, to communicate richness, communicate um, opulence and, and wealth. And what is so special about that kind of rug is the design. it's designed to show its richness through the way the yarns are used. Mm -hmm. So you can actually create shading and light through the yarns because of the thick pile. Uh, and again, they're known for very beautiful bright jewel tones, which is just perfect for your kind of rug um, and your hides. But they're in a more 
um, traditional patterns. So they're similar to an oboe song, oftentimes in the, the basic out, uh, outlook of the rug. But where you see the difference is because of the construction, you can get much more details and much more richness in the, the savonnerie. And, and I think we expect through some of the pieces that we may add to shade or create some of this dimensional effect. And that's really important to me. I want, I want to get the feeling of movement. I want to get the feeling of how something is, is moving and therefore how it catches the light as it moves. So it's in the shadow here and it's in the, in the sunlight here. And therefore with that, you create the, the effect of, of motion, but that you can do it through the hides and through the, the gradual gradation of colors. And mm -hmm. what I love about your rugs is that you've got this huge array of colors to be able to create that effect. And one of the things that's unique about working with the material, because while I may have invented the, or I may have created the carpet, I didn't invent the material. Right. I found it a use for it. One of the things interesting about this is the way the material plays with light. Mm -hmm. um, it's backlit, per se, mm -hmm. so it gives it a reflective quality and a depth that's really difficult to see in something else. Yes. Talk a little bit about how you feel that may impact this collection, Tim. Well, I think that, that, that color and light are so important in, in terms of a rug because the rug is truly the thing that runs throughout the room and it is, is, is sets the tone for the room. Everything else is built on that rug. So I think that getting the range of colors, getting the range of, of motion, getting the light onto the rug uh, is so key. And I think that's what we'll be able to do with our collection. So take a little a departure from that. As a designer, tell me about the, the process you employ when you're creating spaces. Um, selfishly, a lot of designers confide that they start with the carpet in the room as the basis for what they're trying to accomplish. Tell me how you look at these spaces, because here we are in this beautiful empty space. Where does it begin for Tim Corrigan? Well, I, I, the, I think that American designers really do start with the rug. Uh, in Europe, they don't as much. Um, and so because that, that in Europe, they'll often look at the other spaces because they've got many more architectural details to work with because the average American room is drywall. So if you think about it, it's the carpet becomes the star. In a room like this, which has got all this incredible architectural detailing and it's got the mirrors integrated uh, and, and then it's got the, the parquet of Versailles floors, there are so many elements that you're already starting with that you cannot think of any one element as the star. They are all supporting players to create a bigger effect. This is a brilliant observation, uh, I think, Tim, because somebody once told me, your carpets are the trophy in the room. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right now, I feel the room is the trophy. And that's what I think is interesting about a European style in general, mm. is that European style is very much about the, the sum of all the individual mm. pieces are so much more important. So that Frankly, as a designer, I feel that I can get a couple elements. If I don't get them, if they're, each element's not a home run, it's okay because it's the summation of all of them together that create the overall effect. Whereas in a room where you have, in a minimalist room where you've got six elements, each piece has got to be a home run or the room fails. In a room like this, all the elements work together to create an overall effect. And so that's why, the, to me, the rug is key but it has to play well with others. It has to work well with us. It cannot be the one that's saying, give me all the spotlight. It has to be a part of the whole. I'm not, uh, I'm not certain any carpet could take the spotlight away from <laughs> well, a place like that. Well, anyone could, it's Kyle Bundy. <laughs> I want to take that. Well, thank you. I, but it, but I, I mean that seriously. I, understanding the, the juxtaposition between what Americans, I think, do very well, which is contemporary, um, more minimalistic architecture and interior design, you have to have really important elements that, that cannot fail. Yes, and in yes, a room yes. like this, you have to make sure everything plays well together. Yes, exactly. And that's, it's, it's, a, hmm. it's a very key distinction, is that they have to work together. Interesting. You, you know, you should do something about this. Write about it. <laughs> you should explain these things My to people. My next book. You, you, should ex you should explain these things to people. <laughs> Tell me, Tim, the Obasan, what type of room or space do you typically use that style carpet in? So um, an Obasan is, is um, uh, it's a bold carpet. So you would tend to use that more uh, in a 
in a living space, uh, in, a, in a space where it's making a strong statement. Um, they can be interpreted in a much quieter way. There are pale obisons as well, uh, but traditionally they are very graphic and very uh, done in sort of primary or jewel tone colors. So they're a big statement rug. Um, so I, I would tend to see them in more of a public room than in a private room. Okay. Now, um, the Polonaise, which, as I mentioned earlier, is kind of really one of my favorites. Where, um, where would a designer see that style of pattern being employed? A Polonaise works anywhere. <laughs> I mean, that's one of, it's, it's a rug that is, you talk about a rug that plays well with others. It is, it is truly one of the most versatile rugs. I can see it in the most elegant living room. I can see it in a quiet bedroom. I, mm. It really works so well because it's not a busy rug. It's not, it's not an overbearing rug. Mm. Uh, it's a very elegant rug, but one that can be either played up or played down, depending on how you want to decorate the room. Sounds like you can, you can dress it up. Dress it down. Dress it up or you can dress exactly. it down. You've got a beautiful series of savonneries in the collection. Tell me how a designer uses that style of carpet typically. Well, a savonnerie is, is, a, is another bold rug. Um, by nature of the design and the colors. Uh, it's a very luxurious rug. Um, so again, it's one that you would use in, I, you could use it in a, in a public space, in a, in a living room, a dining room, a uh, family room, but you could also use it in a bedroom because it's, uh, it's because of its, of its nature, mm -hmm. because of it, the way it, you get the sense of light and dark and, and, and depth. Um, it's a rug that you can use in a very, sparsely decorated room, or it can be one that's got lots of furniture because the pattern is one that you can put furniture in, in all over. You don't have to worry about, gee, am I, if I'm, am I leaving the center medallion open? It's not one of those rugs. It's a rug that you actually can, can really place furniture on fairly easily. Now, the, the, the designs that we have referred to as, as Alençon inspired or lace inspired, um, I think are really beautiful and have a really unique uh, softness and depth. Tell me, what type of an environment would a designer use a carpet of that style? To? Uh, I think coloration on, on the Allenstone rug is going to be key because you can either play that rug very muted and very really in a room that can go anywhere, or it can be super saturated. Mm. And it will, it will be read like two totally different rugs because the basic design of it is fairly graphic. But if you make it, uh, if, it, if you choose to do it in sort of paler, monotone sort of colors, mm -hmm. it will it will read one way. If you choose to make it big wow jewel tones, it will read big wow rug. It's a design that lets you play it up and down. So I think that that's a, it's a very easy rug to use. So the, the, what type of um, space benefits most from a Florentine style carpet? Right. Um, I think again, that's one of those rugs that because it's a pattern that repeats because it's non-directional. It gives you a lot of, of leeway as to where you're going to use it and how you're going to use it. I'm very, as a designer, I'm very concerned when I look at a rug and I'll say, oh, well, you know, that's going to really limit me. That's going to limit me where I put furniture, how I use it, um, whether it, you know, whether it's directional or non-directional. Um, so the, the Florentine is, is a great rug because it is non-directional. The pattern's not so large. Mm. Uh, it's one that you can really use and, 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 and it will not say, I need to be the star. Some rugs do want to be the star. Again, this is a, a rug that is beautiful. You can either play it up, play it down. It can, be, it can work both ways. Tell me, uh, uh, tell me what you, you know, Art Modern are some of my favorite designs. Uh -huh. They're bold, they're uh -huh. strong. Uh -huh takes a special room. Yeah, it does, because that's the Art Modern style is one that really is very much, uh, does not like to be put in the, in the shadows, does not like to be play the supporting character. They like to be the star. Uh, and so I think this, the Art Modern rug, is one that is going to be more of a statement. It's, it's, it's a look at me rug. It's like, wow, that's, that's a cool rug. Um, and as opposed to being one that sort of blends in. So I'd see that as one where there's not as much furniture being placed on it because you really want to see the shape. You want to see the what's going on in the rug because it is a statement. And you don't, it's not, again, 
one that is meant to be put in the background. Transition a little bit, Tim. If we were cutting something called Corrigan on carpets, this is kind of the area I'd like to explore. Tell me a little bit about how Tim approaches carpets in space, bedrooms, living areas, entrances. Tell me what your feelings are. Well, I think that, that uh, it's interesting. I've been, I've been influenced a little bit by the European style, uh, having, having lived in Europe for so long, where it doesn't, designers don't start with the carpets the way they do in America. Um, I look at carpets, as I, as I was saying before, a bit as a part of the total, of the total whole. And I'm not one of those people who says, gee, if, the, if this is a light blue that's in the carpet, I need to find that exact light blue in, in the paint or in the fabric, whatever. I like to have the carpet be of the room, but not feel like it's too, mac, mitchy, uh, too matchy, that it doesn't feel too much like, oh, yes, that's exactly, that, that's the only rug that could go in the room. I want to feel that there's, got to, there's play, that you can say, say, this carpet works great in this room, but I can take it to another room and it's going to be beautiful in that room as well. I don't like to design a rug, a room all around any one element. That's interesting. Now, do you use uh, a lot of runners in your work, Tim? I do use a lot of runners um, because I really don't like a lot of bare floors. It doesn't matter to me, even if you've got a beautiful parquet to Versailles like this, and you sort of say, gee, why would you cover it? Well, you need, rugs play a very important part. They are what give the room, make the room feel cozy, feel inviting, feel warm. And I think that, to me, I put carpets in, in, in just about every room. And I'll have clients who say, well, we don't need a rug in there. And I'll say, you do, even if you don't know it, you need it because it's going to give that, that, that room a sense of warmth. And there's nothing more important than a home feeling warm and inviting. And even if it's the most contemporary of homes, you still want it to feel welcoming. And a rug does that. Now, do you ever use um, uh, cylindrical or circular type style carpets? Um, we, I tend not to use a lot of circular carpets um, just because I feel that they oftentimes, unless the room is playing to that, um, I feel like it sort of defines spaces in ways that I don't like. I, don't, I, I would rather not let the carpet define the space. Sometimes there are times where you actually want a carpet to delineate. So in some big room, I'll use two carpets to sort of say, this is, this is for this and this is for that. But, um, but I find that round rugs um, make, in my experience, make people feel a little uncomfortable because it starts cutting spaces off in unusual ways. And you start, it starts to define a space that, in a way that you wouldn't naturally put furniture. Now, how do you use carpets to define space, Tom? Um, we use, I use carpets to define space a lot because it very clearly sort of does delineate and says, this is an area that's for X and this is an area for Y. So in a room like this, my goal is to actually have one big carpet because I don't want it to feel like it is two separate rooms. But, uh, but you could very easily have one carpet for one seating area and the room's big enough to have a completely different seating area that has a different rug. So you could do it that way. I'm, my objective is to use one rug here because I want the two seating areas that will be here to feel as if they are in the same room and that people could be talking but still be in the same room. You feel like a, a large carpet will help um, unify the space even if there's two different vignettes? Absolutely, yes. Interesting. Yeah. Now, our business has grown a lot since we did, first worked with you at Greystone yeah. and we have subsequently. You know, you could do this in a lot of different ways. Why Hyde? Uh, because I think that what I, one of the things that I love about Hyde is that I, I, I believe very much in um, practicality and comfort in design. And Hyde is virtually indestructible. I, you know, I think you told me early on, and I thought it was so great, is that you sell a lot of rugs for dining rooms. And I, and I thought, my God, that's so true. You said, you know, these, these cows have been out, and they're used to being, getting wet and having things on them. And the fact that they are indestructible, that they are so sturdy, that's one of the things that I love about your product, is that you get the luxurious feel of, uh, and, and, and of the hide. You get the great colors that, you, you know, that you've created, uh, but then you have that aspect of the practicality of it. And I think that if more people knew about hide rugs, they'd be everywhere, because no one wants to be worrying about how you live in a room. You want to be able to feel that you can really live in it, and if you spill, fine. You can clean it up, and you can with your rugs. Okay.